At a time of military tension in the Taiwan Strait, the city of Sanya in southern Hainan province declared a state of war on August 6, not because of the so-called unification of the motherland, but because of a resurgence of COVID-19. Sanya is a well-known tourist city and is currently at the peak of the summer tourist season. Officials in Sanya say about 80,000 tourists are currently stranded. They were met with a sudden interception order, an experience that they may never forget. Starting from August 6, all flights to Sanya have been cancelled by order. On that particular day, flights to Sanya were turned back midway. Scheduled flights at Sanya Airport were asked to fly out empty, carrying no passengers, and flights with boarded passengers were asked to disembark. Flights can only fly out of Sanya empty. At the Sanya Airport, the terminal building just received notice that passengers were only allowed to leave and no entries were allowed. Passengers stranded at the airport will be transferred to hotels in the city and wait for follow-up arrangements. The first move tourists made upon hearing the news was to rush to fly out of Sanya. China's news media, the paper, reported that a query of relevant booking software showed that tickets for direct flights from Sanya to Shanghai on August 6 were hard to get, and business class return tickets from Sanya to Shanghai were as high as over 10,000 RMB, or about 1,500 USD. Some had succeeded in escaping, but many failed in their efforts. Some tourists were at the airport checking in and boarding, but their flight failed to take off, missing their opportunity to escape by five minutes. It was found that flights to Beijing have been suspended. After all, the capital city of Beijing has the highest level of protection in place. We want to go home. We want to go home. We hope everyone will cooperate and understand. Finally, the speaking official left under the protection of a large group of police officers. Um, so we got to the airport and um, uh, we we're able to get into the terminal. Um, we look up at the screen, we just see a sea of red, all these cancellations. Um, but we noticed our flight, which was leaving to Shanghai, I think it was at 3 p.m. or 2, 2 p.m. It was still um, on schedule. Um, so we checked in, checked our luggage and got through security. We're going to our gate and about 20, late, 20 minutes later, they said all flights from Sanya were, were canceled. Um, it's, it's disappointing. Uh, and as I mentioned before, it's just like we we were locked down in Shanghai for two and a half months and we're just like, wow, we can't believe this is actually happening again. This is so unlucky. Um, but yeah, it's it, it's it's one thing you just have to you just have to live with and, and just hope that um, we're able to, to get back to Shanghai as early as possible. Hainan province, where Sanya, the city, is located, is the only province in China that is entirely tropical and is also a maritime and island province. Since August 7th, the province has been conducting a province-wide nucleic acid test. A day later, the province designated a total of 250 high-risk zones and 145 medium-risk zones. 
More than 8,500 people from 18 provinces and cities across China travel to Hainan to support and assist with sampling, nucleic acid testing, and other related tasks. One of the most affected areas in the province is Sanya City, where the Omicron BA5.1.3 strain was found. According to the official notice, a total of 24 new local confirmed cases in Hainan province were recorded when the outbreak first resurfaced on August 3rd, all in Sanya City. On August 6th, an additional 80 cases were recorded in Sanya City. However, the authenticity of these official figures has been questioned by outsiders. Not only is Sanya's airport closed, but the entire province has become virtually an isolated island. For ports, 164 outbound flights have been cancelled. Starting from August 8th, all flights in and out of Haikou have been cancelled, as well as all flights in and out of Boao. At the same time, the Chinese railroad authorities have prohibited selling tickets for Sanya, so people cannot leave Sanya by rail. Um, and most of the establishments and venues and things were all closed already. They were open that day, earlier in the day, um, but everything uh, definitely closed earlier at least. Um, so we, we didn't really get to see anything um, other than going from one hotel to another hotel last minute. Uh, to try and like beat the rush, we we were all aware of like the risk, but I mean like if you're traveling in general in China, like you should kind of be aware of uh, what could happen, um, and if you don't consider that, then you should probably just not go in the first place. According to Tsai Xin, a number of Sanya hotel sources and travelers have revealed that stranded hotel visitors have to pay for their own rooms, and no subsidy policy has been announced. That is to say, tourists who are intercepted and stranded in Sanya City need to pay for their own bills, or private enterprise hotels have to bear part of the cost too. For the tourists staying in Sanya's hotels from 0600 on August 6, 2022, when the temporary citywide static management is implemented, the hotels can provide the tourists with a 50% discount on extension of stay. We have divided the city into different areas and set up nucleic acid testing points in a reasonable and scientific manner, with one point for 2,000 to 3,000 people. A total of 619 sampling points have been set up. However, a large number of people complained that the Sanya Hotel maliciously raised the retail price and then gave half price to the stranded tourists. The Chinese media, the paper, reported on August 7th that a family of 13 from Chengdu were traveling in Sanya and were forced to stay there. For 13 people, it would cost about 1850 US dollars a night to stay. With meals, the total goes up to about 4000 a day. According to the latest epidemic prevention policy of Sanya City, it takes at least seven days before they can leave Sanya, which means that the cost for the family is as high as 28,000 US dollars, and they still don't know whether they can leave the city smoothly after seven days. From 6 a.m. on August 6, Sanya entered a de facto lockdown. Since the Chinese Communist Party feels that the term lockdown has a terrible reputation globally, it has adopted a new expression which states that the city is under temporary, region-wide static management, requiring people to stay at home and stay within their neighborhoods. The timeline for reopening will be announced separately. Live local footage shows no people or vehicles were seen on the streets due to the lockdown. No tourists or locals were seen on the beaches either. The city is still urgently constructing mobile cabin hospitals and plans to have a stock of 25,000 isolation rooms. As a well-known tourist city, tourism is one of its economic lifelines. According to Tianyan Cha, a big data company in Beijing, the number of tourism-related enterprises in Sanya is over 32,000. Among them, 75% of the businesses were established within five years. According to its official data, in the first half of 2022, China's domestic tourism revenue and the number of tourists have declined, and the tourism industry is facing a tough time. Now with the outbreak in Sanya, the impact on the summer tourism market is expected to be significant. Previously, China's official media made a big push to encourage people to travel in order to boost China's economy. I'm going to Hangzhou for a business trip. I think now it's easier to travel. For example, I only need to take a COVID test when I arrive in Hangzhou, then I can move freely around the city.
During the summer, China's Southern Airlines plans to carry out over 160,000 flights, with the average daily domestic flights expected to exceed 2,200. And in northern China, we believe the daily average flights at Beijing Daxing International Airport will hit over 100. However, in the face of the outbreak resurgence, the CCP's determination to enforce its zero COVID policy hasn't changed in the slightest. In addition to Sanya, eight other cities in Hainan Province have been shut down. On August 7, the Hainan Provincial Epidemic Prevention and Control Command said in a press conference that the current outbreak is sizable and still on the rise, with an expanding trend. Hainan's top official provincial party secretary, who presided over a special meeting to deal with the outbreak, called on the province to abandon the fluke mentality, maintain a wartime state and a decisive posture, and to fight the big battle of outbreak prevention and control. Prevention of spillover is a political responsibility, he said. Chinese media reported that the current round of the outbreak in Hainan Province has spread to four provinces or cities, including Chongqing City, Guangdong Province, Guizhou Province, and Hunan Province. Chongqing is a city directly under the jurisdiction of the central government, which is equal to the province in terms of classifications. In addition to Hainan Province, Iwu City and Zhejiang Province, and a few cities in Hainan Province, are one of the more serious outbreak spots in China during this period. Controls in these parts of China have been escalated. In Yiwu, known as the capital of small commodities, the authorities have no timetable on the imposed restrictive measures, making the industry anxious about the impact on the market. Yiwu has designated high, medium, and low-risk zones, suspended all gatherings such as meetings, forums, training, shows, competitions, examinations, and exhibitions. The authorities have closed down businesses such as KTVs, internet cafes, cinemas, fitness venues, bars, footbath establishments, chess and poker rooms, etc. Cancelled dine-in services and food establishments and prevented people from entering or leaving Yiwu unless necessary. The traffic jam is so bad that even water can't spill in. You can't return to Dongya City from Yiwu. It's impossible. The road is packed with vehicles, so don't get on it. Yiwu is now doing nuclear acid testing from midnight to five o'clock in the morning. The entire population is being tested. The line is so long that you can't see its end. I don't even know where the line starts. It's the same on every street. Several cities in Henan Province also went into lockdown, including the rural areas of these cities. This is Shangchou City, Henan Province, where a peasant was caught sneaking out into the fields to administer pesticides to his crops. He was told by village officials to apologize publicly on the radio. The village cadres caught me while going out to apply pesticides. I was caught. Everyone, please stay at home. Don't go out. Please learn from me. Ten times. Say it ten times. My name is Li Li Shi. I went to the field today to apply pesticides to my crops. I was caught by the village cadres. You have to wear a mask at the entrance of your own home. You know? I'll go get you a mask. I am not going out. Ugh. It's the same. Even if you don't go out of home, you still have to wear a mask. Nearly three years have passed. The people of China have not been able to escape the shadow of the epidemic and are embracing more and more new ways of living. Did you see the alarm during the epidemic? When you go out, the alarm is connected to the police station, the neighborhood committee's cell phone, and the cell phone of the director of the epidemic prevention department. All of them will call the police. Do you see? Hey. 
吃。啊！这个新出来了吗？这个不是，疫情期间就这，就这个。只要你一出门，他就报警了。派出所也知道，居委会也知道，这个主任也知道。看见没有？你发抖。